Hello, Oscillator Sync here. This little friend here is the MIDI hub from Blockus. It is a four in and four out MIDI processing unit, and it can do all of the good utility MIDI merging, MIDI splitting. Uh, it can do filtering of MIDI messages and the like, but it's actually set up so that it can be a very good friend to a hardware setup where you need to do more interesting MIDI processing in order to get more from your equipment. Uh, just quickly before we get going, in the interests of transparency, the MIDI hub was sent to me uh, by Blockers to take a look at and make a video on it if I wanted to. Um, they've had no input on this video and I wouldn't be making this video if I didn't think this was something that was interesting enough to talk about. So let's um, talk about why I think this little friend is interesting. Now on the surface, because it doesn't have a screen, it's got those uh, eight lights on the front, nine, I guess if you include the power, it's got a single button on the back. This doesn't necessarily look like it's going to be a particularly configurable piece of equipment, but actually the MIDI hub hardware is kind of only part of the story. It's coupled with a software editor, which allows us to load pipelines of MIDI processing onto the MIDI hub, which we can then take away and use without the editor uh, into the uh, different preset slots there, which allow us to set up really potentially quite involved sets of MIDI processing that allow us to do interesting stuff. So what I want to uh, explore um, in this video and, and probably in a couple more videos is how we can take the MIDI hub and use it as almost a, a generative uh, compositional device. But uh, before we get there, just to introduce the basic concepts, um, the setup that I have right now is I have my uh, Keystep Pro plugged into the first input, input A on the MIDI hub, and then coming out of uh, output A on the MIDI hub, uh, we have the NTS-1 from Korg. So uh, just to introduce how the pipelines work, what I'd like to do is set up a uh, preset which gives us velocity control over the filter on the NTS-1. Okay, so this is the MIDI hub editor here. Uh, and if I just um, smash the keys on my Keystep Pro for a second, uh, you have to believe me that I am smashing the keys there. Um, there's no sound being generated by the NTS-1, and that's because currently uh, this pipeline is completely empty, so there's no way for the MIDI data to flow from one place to another. So on the left-hand side here, we've got a bunch of different pipes that we can add to our pipeline. So we've got pipes to do with inputs and outputs. We have um, ways of generating a clock and a CC LFOs here. We have filters, which will... Um, filter messages or um, uh, reduce the range of the um, the messages that are coming through. We have modifiers which are going to take incoming MIDI messages and change them somehow. There are lots of different ways it could uh, change them. Uh, and then down at the bottom here we have some additional functionality around um, tempo. So if we want to create uh, just a MIDI through from the two ports that we had plugged in, which was just port A for the input and port a for the output. What we want to do is just drag a from MIDI pipe in here. We can see here that it says from A. Whenever you click on one of these pipes over here in the properties, you get uh, some additional things that we can change. So we could change what our input is here. Um, you also get help, contextual help, whenever you click on anything down here, which is very useful. Don't have to keep opening up the manual. Uh, if we want to then route that to the corresponding output, we can just bring in a two MIDI pipe here. Now we have a pipeline that goes from input A to output A. And now if I play some notes on the key step, we have sound, brilliant. So this is how you would set up routing. And if you wanted to create a MIDI splitter, for example, so if we wanted to split the input from A out to A and B, we could just drag in another from A here, bring in a to and then change its destination to MIDI B. So now we have from A to A and from A to B. So we've created a MIDI splitter uh, between those two ports. We could do merging the same way. Uh, yeah. So uh, if you just want to set up routing, brilliant. Uh, we can we can do that really easily just by choosing the ins and outs 
as we need. As it happens, uh, that's not really what we want to do. What we want to do in our case is give the uh, NTS1 some um, velocity mapping onto the filter. So the harder we play, the more the filter opens up because that's not something that you can do on the unit by default. So in order to do that, um, we're going to look for a modifier, which is called transform. And what the transform uh, pipe does is it takes one type of message, for example, a note on message, and then transforms it into a different type of message, for example, a CC message. So we can drag this in here, pop it in the middle, and we can see down here we have our properties. So what we're interested in here is uh, we're going to convert the note on into, and this is correct as it happens, a control change. So if we want to know what control change, we'll just grab the uh, MIDI implementation chart for the NTS1. We're looking for the filter cutoff here, which is here. So that's uh, 43. So um, set CC number to argument one. So uh, we want to set that to 43. And the value is going to be the incoming velocity, which uh, we can just leave as is. And now hopefully if I play softly, we have a nice um, dark sound. And as I play harder, we get a brighter sound. Now you can probably hear that there's a um, almost a little, almost glitchy click. at the start of the note sometimes. Uh, and that's because at the moment, what's happening is we're playing the note and then straight afterwards, the uh, CC has been changed to its new value. So if I go from a very quiet and closed filter and then what you can hear there is the filter quickly moving to its new value after I've played the note, but we can fix that here. So we have a mode here, which is uh, insert before, which means that our control change message is being sent before the note message gets through. So now we have a proper velocity control over the filter. You could use this um, very similarly, for example, to um, get proper velocity control on the Volker FM, for example. So that's sort of the basic idea you have your inputs, your outputs, and then in between there you do other processing. And there's a whole lot of different processing that we can do. What I'm interested in is um, can we use this processing in order to make music on its own just by doing MIDI processing? So let's have an explore, shall we? Okay, so I have swapped the NTS-1 out for something with a little bit more polyphony, which is the OP-6. And in the editor, we've just got that standard through preset to start off with. And what I'd like to do as a kind of a, a challenge or a way to explore the functionality here is I've just got a sequence set up here, which is just a single note played once a bar. So um, the question is, can we take that one note being played um, once a bar and turn it into something potentially lovely? <laughs> Let's try that, shall we? Uh, potentially lovely. That I do aspire to the very highest. So um, one thing that I think is quite interesting in here is um, in the modifiers, we have this delay pipe here. And that basically does a MIDI delay. So rather than it being an audio effect, it's going to take a note being played and it's going to um, treat it like uh, there was a delay on the MIDI message rather than on the audio. So let's bring that in and have a, have a look. You can hear what it's doing there. And the way it's doing that is um, it's applying um, a feedback to it, but the feedback is going to be reducing the velocity instead. So you kind of get that velocity drop off. It's tempo synced at the moment. Um, and we're able to overdub additional um, notes as we go. So um, at the moment, the repetitions are set to four. Uh, let's set that to infinite and just let the 
feedback die down instead. Okay, so what we've got there is a, a nice little delay uh, that's all happening inside MIDI. So um, let's um, introduce some variation in the notes that are being played. So um, again, within the um, pipes here, we have a random. And if we put that after our delay, because the delay is still kicking out MIDI messages, we're going to be able to randomize notes within those MIDI messages. Make sure it's on the right side of the delay. So um, over here in the settings for the uh, random, we can change what is going to be randomized. So on the drop down here, we have pitch, uh, sense, semitones, octaves. So let's go semitones. So we're choosing new notes. And let's um, send it an octave north and an octave south. Oops, oops, 21, that's what I meant. And now every time that note gets played, the delayed versions of it are getting put to random notes. interesting I think it's got a certain charm to it but um, I think maybe uh, what would make more sense is if we could have this all happening within a scale so rather than being just purely random notes uh, an octave above or an octave beneath let's actually force all of these notes into the scale like you would have on a scale mode on on the key step for example so uh, in order to do that, the um, pipe that we want to bring in is this one here, which is the scale remap. So let's pop that in there. At the moment, this is set to a chromatic, so um, it's just going to be allowing all the notes through. But we can choose different presets here. Um, and now stuff's been forced into particular scales. Or indeed, you can um, choose your own as well. So we can, um, rather than using one of the presets, we can start to think about forcing stuff into uh, our own scale. So let's set this to chromatic. And then, um, so maybe root always goes to the root. Let's go to the flat second. Let's go for mostly sort of um, major feeling thing something like that yeah nice okay so um I think what might be interesting is to take this um, whole pipeline here and duplicate it, but have it spit out the delay at a different um, tempo, different uh, synced tempo here. So we can right click here, duplicate whole pipeline. Now you can hear it's playing two note chords because it's happening twice. That's quite nice. But um, if we come into the delay of the second one, perhaps we make this one go faster, maybe 16th notes. Nice little clusters out of the start, perhaps. feedback for a bit longer. Um, 
and maybe this high one because it's these little clusters of notes perhaps we'll have this one operating a uh, an octave above so um, in here uh, we can grab the transpose I believe and we can either put this at the start and transpose the incoming note or at the end I guess we'll just stick it at the end and up by 12 semitones so up an octave And I kind of feel like it might be nice to duplicate this again, make it slower and down an octave. So we'll duplicate this one because it's already got the transpose in it. Also quite pretty, has to be said. But let's um, take this uh, delay and make it a lot slower, maybe like quarter note something. Lower that feedback because it doesn't need to go on for quite as long and transpose minus 12 instead. We kind of get these interesting clusters that are all tied within that that world and just to remind you this is all just one note being played once per bar here on the um, key step so uh, I think maybe that at some points this is a a little bit busy and B there's maybe a little bit too much repetitiveness because it's always the same rhythm each time as as nice as it is so let's um let's make it a little bit more sparse shall we so we have this chance um pipe here which is going to allow us to um essentially uh, a bit like the probability on the um electron boxes it's going to basically say um here's a percentage chance that any particular note is going to be played and because remember this delay is midi notes rather than audio it's going to be per repeat that we'll be able to check the chance so let's um grab this well let's first of all let's just mute or rather bypass these two outputs here so we're just listening to our first one and we can take that chance and we can pop it here and now we've got two different types of chances here so uh, the timed chance I think breaks everything down into whatever this period is and decides within this period whether anything comes through and then you have the general chance like uh, percentage here which is just the chance per note so I think for our purposes our timed chance will have that at 100% and just maybe have like a 75% chance that any note is going to play so that we can hear that not every note is coming through and that's including the um including the original note, not just the ones that have been delayed, because it's all within this pipeline. Uh, so we can bring in our twinkly friend here and do the same thing. Set the time chance to 100%. And because it's busier, we can have the chance of 50% instead. And then our um, lower notes. Same thing, or two hundred percent for the time chance, and maybe again seventy five percent chance that it plays. Do we even want to drop that down another octave? Yeah. 
Yes, I think we do. And just to reinforce once again, this is a single note being played once per bar that's generating all of this. Now, if you look down at the bottom here where it says uh, 20 of 255 pipes, there are many, many more bits of MIDI processing that we can start to introduce here. Maybe we'll just add one more for today. Um, let's... Maybe let's add like a... Um, straight up arpeggiator to sort of ground this a little bit. So we'll have a from and a two. Uh, and if we want this to play with an arpeggiator, we're going to need to make this note last for longer. So what we can do, there is a modifier called length. It's the first one actually. And we'll stick that in here. And we'll say that the length is now going to be one bar because we're, we're getting clock here. So we'll say one bar. So this um, particular pipeline is going to sustain that note for an entire bar. If we're going to want to give the arpeggiator, which spoiler alert is one of the modifiers, something to work with, we're going to have to um, convert this single note into a chord. And for that, we can use the harmon or harmonizer. So here in the properties, we can choose what um, the intervals from that um, first note are going to be. So let's do something fairly basic so that it's going to work uh, all the time. So let's maybe just do a fifth above, an octave above, and maybe a major third. You should hear each time, let's just bypass these. Now each time that one note has been played, we're getting that major chord. Right, so um, we can take that now and bring in an arpeggiator modifier. Now hopefully next time we hit it. There's our arpeggiator, lovely. Bring this uh, one back in. Okay, that's kind of working for me, but it's a bit static at the moment. So maybe let's uh, bring in a random again at the end here, and this time apply it to velocity. So maybe uh, 50 and 50. So we've got a bit of that swirl, ebb and flow going on there. Bring in the other parts. processing, we can generate a semi-generative bed cluster with an arpeggiator going on really that's so going to ground it. And uh, when we send this to the uh, MIDI hub, we're free to disconnect it from the computer, take it wherever we're going to be doing our hardware jamming and we'll have this sort of lovely arpeggiated generative MIDI delay environment to jam with. And this would be just one of the presets that we could switch between on the MIDI hub. Let's treat ourselves and add some more reverb, shall we?
Just sit and listen to this for a bit. It's uh, amazing what you can do with just one note per bar when you have enough MIDI processing. So I think um, I'll do at least one more video on the MIDI Hub where we take this idea and start to apply some real-time control in hardware to some of these parameters so that we can create additional musical ideas out of this, or at least different dynamics. If there's something else that you want to see on the MIDI Hub, then uh, let me know down in the comments. Um, I think it's quite, I think, I think it's a device that is very interesting because it offers you great utility if that's what you want to use it for. But it also gives you quite a lot of creative ideas as well that you can use to enhance your setup. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm still pretty excited to explore this um, some more and see how that I can integrate it into my setup, maybe with the modular via the CVO CD. I think it might work really well in that environment. Anyway, um, I hope this was interesting. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, then please do give it the old thumbs up. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any upcoming synth fun. But uh, until next time, have a wonderfully chilled day. Take care. Bye-bye.